Ah, down country bikes, the category that everyone loves to hate. Down country bikes take the lightweight and peppy feel of their cross country origins and give them a big dose of extra descending attitude. And with the gimmicky name aside, there is no doubt that these latest models have got us excited. So with that, here's our top 5 down country bikes for 2023. And though we say it ourselves, we've included some real head turners. So don't forget to tell us your favourites in the comments. First up is a hand-built in the USA carbon fibre rocket ship, the Allied BC-40. Allied may be better known for their road and gravel bikes, but the BC-40 is their first down country bike, and we think it looks stunning. As mentioned, the frame is hand-built in the USA, and while that does come at a price, more on that in a moment, the frame is exceptionally lightweight at under 2 kilograms for the frame, shock and all hardware. It also means you can choose from a huge range of frame and decal colours to customise your ride. Nice! They even offer a replica version of team rider Payson McAlveen's personal BC40, which looks incredible with its splatter fade paint. Down to the tech details, and the BC40 ticks all the boxes a downcountry bike should. With 120mm of travel front and rear, thanks to a single pivot suspension system with on-trend flex stays, Allied claims the BC40 offers second to none pedalling performance. Down country bikes are just as much about the downs as they are the ups, and the BC40 66.5 degree head angle and long 475mm reach for the size large should give it the descending ability to match its climbing chops. Allied claimed the BC40 is perfect for all day epics, and as such, it comes with two bottle cages inside the front triangle for all your hydration needs. It also features SRAM's UDH derailleur hanger, neat internal cable routing, and can be equipped with a remote lockout as well if you really love to stamp on those pedals. The BC40 is available as a complete bike or as a frame set, with prices starting from $4,995 for the frame with RockShox Sidlux Shock, or $7,725 for the least expensive XT build. The BC40 looks like a stunningly fast all-rounder and we hope we can swing a leg over it very soon. The Scott Spark was one of the first cross-country race bikes to spawn a more capable 120mm travel downcountry version, even before downcountry was a thing. The latest Spark launched in 2021 and it took that ethos to the next level, and for 2023, they've pushed the boat out even further for the Spark ST. Does that mean we can call it Double Down Country? We'll leave that for you to decide in the comments. Contrary to other brands who have ST standing for short travel, Scott uses it for the term Super Trail. In the case of the Spark ST, this means a longer travel 140mm fork that, interestingly, is not linked to their legendary twin lock system. This is something that both our lovely audience and engineers have been asking for a while now. Why? Well, it means the fork can be equipped with a more adjustable damper, like the Fox Grip 2 and RockShox Pike Ultimate found on the two ST models in the range. This should give riders maximum adjustment for the fork, while still having that on-the-fly adjustment for the rear shock. Could this finally be the best of both worlds? Let us know what you think in the comments. Both Spark ST models also get Fox Float X nude shocks with a piggyback reservoir which Scott claims should make them better on longer, rougher descents. Outside of the suspension changes, the frame is the same as a standard Spark. This means you get their HMF carbon frame with the shock hidden inside the frame to deliver 120mm of travel. It also gets internal cable routing with the always opinion dividing headset entry ports. As mentioned, the Spark ST is available in two complete bike builds in the UK, starting at £6,999 for the ST910 and rising to an eye-watering $9,999 for the 900 ST tuned. In the US, the single ST900 tuned models goes for $9,999. Stay tuned for a full review of the Spark 940 coming to the channel and BikeRadar.com soon. Next up, it's time for a British twist on a downcountry bike. Kotick's Flare Max might be made of steel rather than carbon, 
but it can still hang with the crowd thanks to its rowdy geometry and the feedback-rich ride feel of steel. While you can build the flare mats with a 130mm or 140mm travel fork for a ride more akin to that of a trail bike, slap on a 120mm lightweight fork and the Flare Max is ready to hammer the pedals. The Flare Max is now in its fourth generation and the most recent updates saw the steel and aluminium frame use their droplink suspension kinematic first introduced on the jet. Kotick claims this keeps the progression curve more consistent through its travel. The updated pivot location gives 20mm more space for longer dropper seat posts, both of which are big wins in our book. It also allows the use of the more common metric size 210 by 50 mm shocks. The proven long shot geometry remains largely unchanged, with a slack 66 degree head angle and steep 76 degree seat angle when fitted with that lightweight 120 mm fork. The reach is a healthy 468 mm on a size medium, while the 448 mm chainstays give oodles of stability at speed. Those numbers, particularly that reach number, put the Flare Max at the aggressive end of the downcountry scale, in keeping with the burly steel frame. Speaking of steel, the Flare Max uses a Reynolds 853 front end, with their signature overform top tube helping to give that fabled steel is real ride quality. Steel may sometimes wrongly be perceived as low tech, but the Flare Max proved this is most definitely not the case. It's bang up to date with internal cable routing through the rear triangle, a dedicated one by only design with a tidy integrated chain guide and a future-proof 44mm head tube that caters for pretty much any fork on the market. It also proves steel doesn't have to be heavy, with a claimed weight of just 12.9 kilos for the gold spec bike equipped with a RockShox SID fork and lightweight Wolfpack tyres. Complete bikes start from a competitive price of £3,499 or you can build your own from the £1,799 frame-only option. We were super impressed with the Flare Max, awarding it 4 out of 5 stars. So if you want a different take on a downcountry bike that flies in the face of convention, then we think it should definitely be on your shortlist. Another trail bike turned downcountry demon is the YT Itso Uncaged 7. Unlike the normal Itso range, the Uncaged 7 is a standalone model that trades 130mm travel for a more XC focused 120mm travel limit. The full carbon frame is shared with the rest of the range, but the suspension is swapped out for a RockShox SID Lux with a shorter stroke and a 120mm SID fork. Both are paired to the RockShox Twist Lock Remote Lockout for those intense out of saddle climbs and sprints, giving it a real edge over the competition. It also retains the geometry flip chip in the rocker link, offering 0.4 degrees of adjustment to the head and seat angles and 5mm of bottom bracket adjustment. In the slack setting, this gives a 66.5 degree head angle and a super steep 77.5 degree seat angle. This gives it an aggressive edge for a bike that floats between cross country race whippet and hard charging trail bike. Not only that, but the specification matches its aggressive intent, but not in the way that you might think. This is most obvious in the wheel and tyre package, which teams DT Swiss's Superlight XRC 1200 spline carbon wheels with Maxxis Racy Recon Race rubber in a 2.4 inch width. That's a proper XC race setup and shows just the kind of riding the It's So Encaged is built for, going fast. SRAM's XX1 Eagle Axis drivetrain further emphasises that racing intent, but aggro downcountry control is boosted by the RockShox Reverb Axis dropper post and four-piston SRAM G2 Ultimate brakes. It all adds up to a bike that weighs just 12.1 kilograms and begs to be ridden as fast as your legs can hammer the pedals. All that carbon, wireless trickery and the ultimate level suspension and brakes mean it's no surprise that it doesn't come cheap. At £6,299 or $6,499 and with just the one model to choose from, you'll have to have deep pockets to get your hands on the Itso Uncaged. Compared to similarly spec rivals though, it is close to half the price of some of them, so there is a solid argument that despite costing more than a second hand car, it is actually surprisingly good value. You can read our full review of the It's So Uncaged at BiteRadar.com with the link in the description below. Last but by no means least, we have the Ibis Ripley. 
The original Ripley was one of the first breeds of capable 29ers when it was released way back in 2013 and has grown ever more capable with each passing iteration. Nowhere is this more evident than when you compare the geometry of the latest Ripley to that of the original. The reach on a size large has jumped by a massive 64mm, while the head angle is almost 5 degrees slacker. Safe to say, things have come a long, long way since 2013. There's more changes in the frame design, as the Ripley V4 introduced in 2019 moved away from the unique eccentric DW-Link design of the original to a more traditional design. New to the Ripley V4S for 2023 is an updated swing arm. This introduces SRAM's UDH derailleur hanger and improved protection to the swing arm, as well as a 55mm chain line which results in a stiffer chainstay. Other changes between the Ripley V4 and the V4S are limited to Ibis's stylish new brand logo and aesthetic, but the proven performance is still there. The DW-Link suspension should give the Ripley incredible climbing traction when climbing, and with room for a 2.6 tyre and a claimed 5 pound frame weight without shock, it could be one of the best technical climbing bikes around. The progressive geometry and super short seat tube give the Ripley plenty of attitude on the downs too. With a 130mm fork and 120mm of suspension out back, to go with that aggressive stance, the Ripley should be a ripper on fun, flowy and technical descents alike. Being fully made from carbon fibre, the Ripley is priced in line with other premium rivals and starts from £3,499 or $3,499 for the frame only option. Full builds start from £6,499 in the UK for the sole SLX build or in the US you can get into it for $5,599 for the NGX build. Don't forget the Ripley is also available in alloy. The Ripley AF is priced from £3,999 or $3,449 for the base Shimano Dior build and a frame only option is also available. So what do you think of our list? Don't forget to tell us what bikes we missed, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our next video.